What's going on, everyone? Um, I, before I start this video, um, I we're talking about the limitless chip, right? So I've recorded the video before I've done the intro because uh, I, I knew the intro for whatever reason would be quite difficult to do, um, but I didn't want to make my next video without talking about what happened yesterday. So Christian Eriksen, obviously what we saw was horrible, and I can only think if that was horrible for us, imagine what it was like for his friends, his family, his teammates. Like, I don't want to pinpoint certain people but the way the team shielded him how quickly they were to react the medical professional anyone that works in the medical profession uh, is an absolute hero like to save a man's life was incredible um luckily the the danish fa have tweeted to say or put out a statement to say the stable he continues to be in hospital which obviously makes sense it's going to be a long road to recovery i'm sure um but i'm just happy that there is at least some good news that has come out of this, but it didn't feel right to go into the next video without at least talking about it. <laughs> this is like the seventh time I've recorded this intro now. But yeah, to be to be that calm, to go onto a pitch in front of millions essentially, because it was on TV for a while, um, and in front of that crowd and just save a man's life, <clears throat> it was incredible. So if any of you work in the medical profession fair play so before we get into the drafts and i'm probably going to do a limitless and a wild card draft for match day two just to kind of show you my thinking uh we're going to go through some talking points i should also say obviously at the time recording this not only have we not seen the england match yet right the video will go out after the england game but i've recorded it before the england game there's also a lot of other matches we haven't seen yet we haven't seen lineups for certain teams to see which players might be nailed we haven't seen which teams are weak right before the tournament everyone was saying well turkey can give italy a game the russia versus belgium game is in russia they're going to make it difficult for belgium well belgium and italy absolutely cruised it and i'm expecting that to happen for a few key other teams that people think are going to do well but the odds do not back that up so it'll be interesting to see so take players i pick with a pinch of salt right because we haven't seen the england team yet um, we haven't seen how they perform whether anyone gets injured or whatever it might be okay the talking points, limitless versus wildcard. Now, for some of you, you're on a strategy where it's limitless match day two, and then you're going into match day three, maybe using the wildcard, maybe rolling with your team. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But for some of you, you will have chosen to use both chips in the group stages. Now, whether wildcard or limitless is better for match day two or match day three is all going to be down to your own kind of strategy, thoughts, and opinions on players. What I would urge people to do is create a draft a wildcard draft and a limitless draft for match day two. Then decide which one you're happier with. Then do the same for match day three and decide which one you're happier with. Because if you can fit in most of the players you want on a wildcard, then maybe you should save your limitless chip. If you can't, maybe you should do it the other way around. Because basically, for anyone that doesn't already know, the wildcard gives you the usual transfer um, budget limit. The, the limitless chip gives you unlimited budget, right? So if you were using it in match day two, you could have Mbappe, Griezmann, Kane, you could have Sterling, you could have basically every single expensive midfielder, Insigne, Hazard. Then in the defense, you have all the expensive French defenders, all the expensive Italian defenders, etc. You can't do that on the wild card. So you need to make a few drafts and decide from there. Match day three is where the key decision comes from. And I'm not sure I have a great answer for it because ultimately we don't know how many teams are going to rotate in match day three? So if I bring the fixtures up, right, the reason why this is such a big talking point, this is match day three. So you look at the fixtures. Italy versus Wales, I'd probably have a few Italian players. They look great um, in the first match against Turkey. I'm sure they're going to do as well against uh, Wales. Wales did defend extremely deep in their first game. Um, but I think Italy have got the players to unlock them, right? Uh, and then you think, well, Belgium versus Finland should be really good. Um, England versus Czech Republic, arguably that's their easiest game. Even if you think the Czech Republic are better than Scotland, for example, and obviously, again, by the time you watch this, you will have seen England play against Croatia. Um, there's, you know, England versus Scotland is a massive game without the Euro factor, right? Versus Czech Republic is probably a little bit easier from an England point of view. Uh, you've then got Germany versus Hungary, which is decent. Spain versus Slovakia, which is another good one. So you could be looking at, I don't know, Gnabry, Havertz, um, and then Torres plus Morata if he starts, perhaps. Then Kane, maybe a midfielder, maybe a defender from England. Then 
uh, Lukaku, De Bruyne, Hazard could all be fit by then. Mounier, obviously, with Castagna injured, it looks like Mounier will get that spot. We know how attacking he is. I'm so gutted I didn't have him um, yesterday. Uh, Netherlands against North Macedonia. Depay, maybe a defender from them, perhaps a midfielder. Uh, and it, obviously, Italy versus Wales. So there's loads of expensive players from good teams that you could use in match day three. But if Italy win their second game, will they rotate versus Wales? Possibly. If Netherlands win their first two games, will they rotate? Possibly. Same with Belgium, right? They've just um, they've just beaten Russia. If they get a good score against Denmark, if they win that game, will they rotate against Finland? They could probably beat Finland with a few rotated players. So on paper, limitless match day three looks really good. But if we think there's going to be rotation and we want to take the risk to um, try and, you know, think about who might get brought in. Like, for example, I don't know, like if we think that Kane is going to miss out, maybe Calvert-Lewin goes into our draft or whatever it might be, right? Same for Belgium. If Lukaku is going to miss out, maybe go, we go with their second choice striker instead. In which case, suddenly the wild card probably becomes a little bit easier to manage. So I'll be honest, I haven't made a decision yet on what I'm going to do, but I'm going to talk through the differences in my teams for Limitless or wild card match day two. And obviously don't ignore cheap players. With Limitless, the idea is that you go for the most expensive players but you also want to play the fixtures and there's uh, a couple of teams in particular i think sweden um, and ukraine like if i go to match day two uh, ukraine have got north macedonia again we'll see both of these teams play in the first game maybe north macedonia will be as good as everyone seems to think they will be and sweden have got slovakia we'll have to see sweden but they got some uh, good players in there forsberg isaac etc um, that we might want to go for, who are maybe a little bit cheaper from the likes of France and England, etc. So don't completely ignore them. So that being said, let's look at the drafts. Okay, so we're starting off with the limitless chip. I'm going to make this um, bigger, right? So you can see the team in just a second. But for me, there's a few kind of key decisions that need to be made, right? Straight away, France have got hungry. Absolutely, triple France is without a doubt what you should do on a limitless chip. The question is, should you take one of their midfielders? Someone like Paul Pogba is probably a different option when it comes to fantasy for the Euros with France than he is for Man United, right? So don't completely rule him out. But otherwise, you go, you can go double defence because surely they're getting a clean sheet against Hungary, right? Um, or you can go double attack. The problem is, outside of Pogba... The attackers that you really want are all forwards. So Mbappe, Griezmann, uh, Benzema, Giroud maybe if Benzema's not fit, etc. They're all forwards, okay? So you could take out Lukaku, for example, um, and put in Griezmann. Uh, sorry, I've already got... Th Let me just take out one of the defenders for a second, right? So you could put in Griezmann. So you'd have, I'd have Griezmann... Um, Lloris in goal, but it could be an outfield defender instead and have a different goalkeeper. Uh, and then Mbappe. So two of my forwards would be from France, right? Got no issues with that whatsoever, okay? Because they got such a good fixture. But then, what you need to do is think about captaincy. So captaincy on this day, uh, day one of match day two, is probably Italy, right? So you're probably going to go for Insignia. That's probably what I would do anyway. Again, Immobile, just like in match day one, he did outscore Insignia, to be fair, but he gets in the way of other strikers. That's my main issue with him, right? And then, okay, let's just, let's just skip ahead. Day three, you're probably going Kane. Right, I think look, that that game is huge. Scotland no pushovers, absolutely. But on this day, unless you're going to go for a Swedish um, captain, which you absolutely could, I think Kane is the standout, and then Mbappe or Griezmann are the standouts here. And I think Griezmann's on penalties. I might be wrong about that, but I think he is, um, which is why I like him alongside Mbappe. The problem comes for this day. Who'd you captain here? Because. You could go for Ukraine. So Yarmolenko, I think, is on penalties. You could go for Malinovsky. Uh, it should be a good fixture against North Macedonia. But are you going to be happy captain them? If you're on a limitless chip where you can get anybody you want, is Ukraine captain where you want your captain to be? If not, then it's probably either Hazard, because he got minutes in match day one, so you'd think he'd probably start match day two. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Or Lukaku or Depay for Netherlands. Now, these aren't easy games. These are probably Netherlands... And Belgium's arguably their most difficult games, I would say. Um, but if you want to go for one of them, you've got to take out one of the French forwards, in my opinion, unless you don't want Kane captain, right? So I would then have to take out Griezmann or Mbappe. Mbappe is the one I'd probably want to stick to, but penalties might swing it to Griezmann. Griezmann is really good for, for France. But let's take him out, and I'll put Lukaku back in. Let's just say he's the one I want to captain. And that's where then I would put in a French defender instead and have the, the double up at the back. Uh, my other keeper almost certainly would be Donnarumma, um, because 
obviously you've got unlimited money, so you'd play Donnarumma against Switzerland, and if that doesn't work, you just bring in Lloris for Hungary, right? Uh, there's no need to go cheap. I don't really see... And I don't really see why you would go for a different goalkeeper, like looking at the fixtures. So that would probably be locked in for me. So that would be my forward line, unless I didn't want a captain Lukaku, in which case I would just go for Griezmann, right? Which is arguably the better play. Then you've got Yarmolenko and Zinchenko, because I think that Ukraine game against North Macedonia is good for Ukraine. Zinchenko obviously listed as a defender. 5.5, probably a little bit too much for me in general but on the limitless chip where he's going to play in midfield i'm happy with that i still have ferran torres i think again we need to see the spain lineup and how they play but i think playing against i think it's poland in match day two is not a bad um, option at all for england right now again i'm recording this before the game the rumor is that Trippier is going to play left back almost certainly he's in the team for set pieces right so arguably he's probably the best english defender it's a risk of course that he might not start in the second game. He might not start a left back. He might be right back. He could be on the bench. But that's worth thinking about. And then Sterling's going to start as well. And again, I know everyone who's watched the Premier League this season is thinking Sterling's been awful. But he doesn't really put a foot wrong for England. And I think Gareth Southgate trusts him. And also, again, I'm thinking about how the game might go before I've even seen it against Croatia. Kane's going to drop deep. You need runners beyond him. Sterling will do that. So for 9.5 men, if he's going to be the England midfield starter and Grealish um, and uh, Sancho aren't starting, I mean, you could go Foden, right? He could be another option because he's apparently going to start. But I do like the idea of three England players against Scotland um, for this team. I think because, because match day... Uh, sorry, the first day in match day two captaincy i'd still want insigne for captain i think i think i thought he looked really good plus you don't take up a, a spot in midfield but i don't think he's a get i don't think you have to have him because you could go for a defender instead like spinazzola we saw how attacking he was i said that an italian defender was not a bad choice for match day one i did talk about florenzi florenzi but spinazzola was great right and he would be the one that i would captain so this is kind of what my limitless draft would look like hazard i'm not sure he looked rusty when he came on against russia right it wasn't i think belgium were better in the first half than they were in the second half they mostly cruised it to be honest against russia but i thought hazard looked a little bit rusty and he's still trying to get his mini minutes up so unless i know that he's going to start i probably wouldn't risk it but i think overall that's how i would set my team up i think i probably would want playing the odds i would want triple england i want triple france i'd want a couple from um ukraine I think even triple Belgium is not a bad option against Denmark, right? Um, forgetting everything that happened, I think Belgium are just such a good team. And Mounier is so attacking. He'll almost certainly be in my team on, on Limitless, I think. But that's the kind of draft that I put together. I'll just make it a little bit bigger so you can see it properly, right? So, And obviously it's set because this is how I set my team up before. So Mbappe is playing in the last day game anyway, so he would be on the bench. Uh, but I don't see a huge amount wrong with that. If I look down at the fixtures... Um, like, and I think about who I'm missing, I don't think there really is anyone. Depay, maybe, against Austria could be a good option. Maybe some Swedish players. Forsberg, Isaac. I'm going to see how they play. Um, I could definitely be tempted by one of them. Potentially, even instead of Insigne, if I'm going to captain Spinozola on the first day. Um, and that's probably about it. Uh, maybe a, maybe a maybe the Spanish keeper, but I think Donnarumma and Lloris, if you're not going to go for Griezmann, is not a bad option. So that is the limitless chip. Let's look at a wildcard draft. Okay, so we'll talk about the wildcard draft now. And now you're going to see how uh, impressive the limitless chip is, right? With all that unlimited budget. And you're going to see just how many downgrades you have to make if you use the wildcard instead. Now, again, this is just my first thoughts on it, right? With a lot of teams we haven't seen, etc., etc. okay? So there might be some changes here. And obviously, someone like Boyata... Um, in defense for Belgium. I'm not sure about that. Martin has said that he played because he's used to playing against Zuber, I think it was. Um, but a lot of people, right? I saw a lot of people translating um, stuff from the, the Belgian press that were pretty surprised that Danea didn't start, right? So that was a big miss. Whether or not you'd want to risk Boyata is another thing. We'd have to wait a bit more news, but it could be another 4.5 million defender. Straight away, Sterling down to Mason Mount. Um, you can't really have uh, another kind of 8, 8.5 million midfielder. So Brady's in. I've got Kane and Mbappe still. But again, Mbappe could be Griezmann just to save you a little bit of money. Uh, in fact, I'm not hating that at all now. I think about it a bit more. You bring in Griezmann gives you another million to spend, right? So, for example, some stuff you could do with that, right? Let's just do it straight away. So we'll transfer Mbappe out, okay? We'll put... Um, 
Oh, we'll put uh, if I can if I can find the thing. Well, we'll do this live. We'll put Griezmann in. He's a bit cheaper. So one thing you can do is you can upgrade Mason Mount to someone like Forsberg for. Um, Sweden, which might not be a bad option. And then you've got 0.5 million to spend. So we could upgrade Boyata to a 5 million defender. I'm not going to worry too much about who the p exact players are right now. I've bought Berardi back in because I thought he was quite good in the first game. Very attacking, cut inside quite a lot as well. Definitely was not afraid to shoot. So hopefully he will get the nod. Again, we will see, if I just make this smaller again, um, we should see, uh, we won't see the lineup. That's the only issue with Italy. So that is a bit of a, a punt maybe for match day two. Um, instead of Zinchenko, there is uh, Mykolenko instead. Instead of Yarmolenko, who is the penalty taker, I believe, for Ukraine, we've got Malinovsky. Now, I think without penalties, he's a great option anyway, by the way. So a good save in there, um, 7 million. I've gone back to Horodetsky in goal because he plays on... I hate I have to make this bloody smaller. He plays the first day against Russia. Now, that's going to be a difficult game, but the fact that he plays first means that you can bring in your subkeeper. So if he happens to get a clean sheet again, then great, you keep him in. If not, you swap him. Uh, I've actually gone for the Croatian keeper, Livakovic. Livakovic, I think I might have that right, um, who plays Czech Republic. Now, again, that might change at some point. What you do probably have to do with a, with a wildcard draft is have someone like Alaba. It's not great. He plays against... Um, he plays against uh, Netherlands, I think, in this in this match day. Um, Yaziki came off early for Turkey, got subbed at half time. That was against Italy, though. So who knows? It might be a little bit easier um, game in match day two, in which case he might play. But you've probably got to have someone like that in. And you're still down to loads of cheap defenders. Spinazzola looks so good, I would just want to keep him in my draft. Um, but that's kind of where I'll go. I've got the pie in at 10 million. Um, again, you could go back down to Mount from Forsberg and upgrade the pie to Lukaku, potentially, if you wanted to go Belgium instead. Um, ideally, I think, for a wild card, you try and find a cheaper attacker. Okay, The problem is, Austria uh, attacker is going to be um, Klaizic or Anatovic, probably, but then they're playing the Netherlands, right? Maybe Ukraine against... Uh, against um, against North Macedonia. So let me go down to Ukraine a second. Um, yeah, Yar Yarmachenko, is it? I think it is. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry, Yarmachuk. Oh, my God, I'm an idiot. Right, yeah, Yarmachuk. Sorry, 7 million. Um, that would give... Yarm I was getting mixed up with Yarmolenko. Sorry. Uh, that would give you 3.5 million to spend. Then suddenly, you're upgrading some of these 4.5 defenders to 5.5 or 5, maybe. You're upgrading some of uh, someone like Alaba to another 7 million midfielder. You could almost maybe even go um, uh, Yarmachuk and Malinovsky, and maybe Yarmolenko and get rid of the defender? Possibly. There's loads of different ways you can go about it, but this is why you need to make another draft. I would be asking myself, am I happy with this draft as it stands, right? So let's make another upgrade. Let's get um, let's get Ferran Torres in here, because he plays Poland, right? And then we'll see if we're happy with it. Then another 1 million. I'd probably do Bayata to Munier, to be honest. I just love that guy. So we're looking at this draft here. Um, which I don't think is bad at all. You've then got Insigne, captain, match day one. You've then got uh, Ukraine, captain, match day two. I don't think on wildcard that's that bad of an option, right? So you could just go for someone from Ukraine, whether it's a defender or attacker. Then you've still got Harry Kane for this day, and you've got your Swedish player um, against Slovakia. And then obviously you've got Griezmann. France against Hungary, which I don't think is a bad option. Maybe you want to find another million to get Mbappe instead, but I think this is the kind of draft you'd have to go for um, on a wild card. Now, I don't think it's that bad. That means on, ma on Limitless Match Day 3, if there's still some big teams that need points, they're going to play first-team players, maybe you can get out a really, really strong side. So it might be worth... If you're using both the chips playing the wild card in match day two, but you're going to have to do your own drafts and decide which way you like best. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Um, I've put this out after the England game um, because I just figure a lot of people will be watching that. But then I realize there's lots of people from around the world that don't care about England. And ultimately, there's lots of matches going on during the group stages where there's three games a day pretty much until uh, match day three when I think it's just two two games a day. Um, 
So there isn't much I can do in terms of putting these videos out when there's no football on. So I'm just going to put it out. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you do, obviously make sure to give it that like. And let me know, are you going limitless or are you going for wildcard in match day two? Or are you just using one chip in the group stages? Everything is viable. Hopefully it's going well so far. I ended up twisting from Insigne to Lukaku. Very happy about that. Definitely sticking on Lukaku, by the way, because he got two returns. You're then betting on a player getting three returns, which is just so unlikely, I think. But uh, you never know. If you want to absolutely gamble, go for it. I'll leave it there. I'll have another video tomorrow, probably the match day preview. My team selection, when I've decided, hopefully, whether to go wildcard or limitless, will be out on Tuesday as well. And then we'll have another deadline stream on Wednesday, I believe, if I've got all my numbers and dates right. Thank you for watching. Uh, ho hopefully, by the time you're watching this, England have won. We've never won an opening game on the Euros. Hopefully today's the day. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the rest of the matches and I'll catch you again soon.